Meet Steve. He's a neighbor and a friend. I'm over at my buddy Steve's place and I'm going to assist you in installing a ring doorbell today. I'm going to assist you in, <laughs> in doing no, that. You're doing all the work. I'm just going to be oh, here just right. to check. Oh, That's great. all. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Let's get started. Step one, cut the power so we don't get electrocuted. We found out it's the laundry garage and kit, so I'm gonna recommend that Steve mark that in his box. This is the uh, Ring Pro. Step two, unveil and take in this glorious product. Uh, you got a few different colors here to choose from. And here's the moment. Now that you've matched the color of your Ring doorbell perfectly with your home decor, it's time to move on to step three. We have to install this small device which will ensure that enough power is sent to your ring doorbell. The ring doorbell will not function properly without this part. Locate your inside doorbell and remove the cover. You need to attach your small device to the two wires labeled front and trans. And we're actually going to loosen both screws up just slightly. Slide in this other ring piece here. Your Ring Doorbell Pro requires minimal power to scan for motion. So this power kit, which is really just a resistor, is required to regulate the flow of power to your doorbell so that it's not chiming at all times. You want to make sure that you put this somewhere. There's a little sticky on the back, but you want to put it somewhere where it's not actually going to be in the way of the doorbell itself, which is this part here. Kind of just stick it right here yeah. without sticking it on anything. Get the wires up out of the way. There you go. Should be good. Box back on. Step four is to remove the existing doorbell. And always test the doorbell before you start to remove it, just to make sure the electricity is turned off. This is always going to be 24 volts or less, which means it's going to be a low voltage circuit, but it could still give you a little bit of a shock, like a static electricity shock on a cold winter's day. Use the screwdriver ring provides to remove the existing doorbell. Okay, I'm just using a level real quick before I make my marks. I just want to make sure that the doorbell is completely level up and down like so. So what I'm doing is just holding the level next to it, just making sure the bubble's in the center. And that way when I go in and I mark it, they're going to make the doorbell completely level. So let's, the next step is we're just going to do little drill holes in two spots right here. Use the end of your screwdriver to help make hooks at the end of your wires. Step six, attach the existing doorbell wires to your new ring doorbell. All right, I'm not gonna screw it all the way in yet. I'm gonna put the second screw in and make sure I get that squared away and then I'll tighten everything up. Okay, take the level, let's check it. We're perfectly level, you see that? Boom. Okay, final step, remove the film, the case just snaps on. Wait, did you hear that? Roll back the tape. Did you notice there was a delay between the doorbell on the outside and the doorbell inside the house? I was curious about this, so I gave Ring a call. And they said this is perfectly normal for this model. See, there's not enough power to simultaneously power everything at the same time when the doorbell is rung. So what happens is they divert power to the Ring doorbell itself to send notifications to your phone. After that notification is sent, the power is diverted back to the mechanical doorbell and then the doorbell rings. So this is why there's a delay for the Ring Doorbell Pro. All right, back to the tutorial. Set up a device, doorbells. Okay. And you're just trying to scan. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there yeah, it goes. It did fast. it. I'm it for you. <laughs> Add your personal information. Add a new location. Front door. I've already installed it. How cool is that? Yeah. That's mechanical. Mechanical, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yep. You'll have to walk to the ring doorbell to complete the installation. Yep. Sign in to your Wi-Fi network. Scanning for Wi-Fi networks. And then after a couple more screens, you'll get this. Okay. Yeah. Holy cow, that's us. There we are. Boom. Now you're all set up, Steve.
We definitely destroy that project. Today on It's Just Science, our lesson begins with the electromagnetic spectrum. Oh yeah. Ooh la la. What is the electromagnetic spectrum, you might be asking? Well, it's a range of frequencies of electromagnetic radiation and the respective wavelengths and photon energies. Uh, so what does that mean? It means that gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, microwaves, radio waves, and of course, visible light are all connected. You know Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Well, actually, indigo is not a thing anymore, so it's kind of like, well, just get over it. It's Roy G. Biv now. They just vary by wavelength and energy. Oh yeah, and they all travel at the speed of light in a vacuum. Did you know that the electromagnetic spectrum wasn't complete until 1905? We've known about visible light forever since the ancient Greek times, but we really didn't know if light was a wave or a particle because it showed properties of both. William Herschel discovered infrared in 1800. No connection yet. The very next year, Johann Ritter discovered ultraviolet rays. Still no connection. Michael Faraday linked magnetic radiation to electromagnetism in 1845. Getting warmer. James Maxwell developed mathematical equations to describe Faraday's work in the 1860s, which proved that all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light. Warmer! In 1886, Heinrich Hertz detected radio waves and then had the unit of frequency named after him. So warm. He then went on to discover microwaves when he was experimenting with high frequency radio waves. Hot pockets! In 1895, Wilhelm Renten discovered a new type of radiation that later became X-ray. So hot. And in 1900, Paul Villard discovered a new type of radiation while he was studying radium that later became known as gamma radiation. So we almost have the spectrum. In 1905, Einstein brought the whole spectrum together with his revolutionary paper on the photoelectric effect. It was proved that all light or electromagnetic waves act as both a wave and a particle. If an electromagnetic wave has enough energy or exceeds a threshold of frequency, then these massless particles called photons can displace electrons. This is called ionizing radiation that can be very harmful or deadly. These electromagnetic waves include UV, X-ray, and gamma. Microwaves ah, pocket. and infrared or heat waves are non-ionizing, so their photons don't have enough energy to displace electrons. This is good, non-cancerous. These are the type of waves that Ring uses to sense motion. The Ring doorbell uses two types of sensors. The first one Ring calls advanced motion detection, which is basically like radar. The first type is an active sensor, which is scanning at all times. The second type is a passive sensor, infrared, that's there for backup. If the Ring doorbell is not able to determine using the first sensor, it'll automatically default to the infrared, which looks for heat signatures. Any living item gives off a heat signature. The number one heat signature around us is gonna be the sun, because it gives off the entire spectrum of electromagnetic waves, but infrared, visible light and ultraviolet are the three rays of light that make it to the surface of the earth from the sun. You see, I could sit here all day waiting for my phone to put a notification up from Ring, but it's not gonna happen, and here's why. The Ring doorbell itself is sending out a series of microwaves. It sends out bursts of microwaves, and it waits for a response back from those microwaves. If the microwaves it sends out is not changing over time, then it doesn't trigger the motion detector. If there is motion and those microwaves take a different amount of time to get back to the sensor in the Ring doorbell, then it does trigger the motion detector. So if I do this, Hey. hey. This ring doorbell, it's gonna pick it up. So, my question is, when is the passive infrared used? Ring in an official statement said that they use it mostly at night, because sometimes the light detection doesn't work quite as well at nighttime. We've all seen Predator, who uses infrared to hunt at night. So the primary sensor backs itself up with the infrared quite often. So there you have it, that's how ring doorbells sense motion. Who knew it was just electromagnetic waves traveling through the air?